Welcome back, everybody, to another record-breaking episode of Caravan of Garbage. Elaborate on that. We broke a record last week. Did we? Because we did the oldest movie we've ever done. Whoa. And this week, we're breaking that record again by doing the oldest movie we've ever done. Whoa. Now, this isn't the oldest movie we've ever talked about in our private lives. I'm just saying. Might be. What about all the times we've whiled away, you know, in front of a fireplace talking about the train that comes into the station, everybody thinks it's a real train, <laughs> and they're like, ah, well, look out. That's and a good sometimes, point. Sometimes yep. we describe it to each other so evocatively yeah. that we actually think a train is coming at us. <laughs> We're not even watching the movie. But I'm like, ah, no, James, stop describing it so well. Uh, people could appreciate how well we describe things. I think Just so from too. these videos yeah, alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. we'll get a comment. That's why we get so many likes. People yeah. leave likes on this video. That's right. And comments that are like, did they... What, what's the plot of this? They didn't describe the plot. Sometimes we just assume you all know, I guess. Yeah, you know King Kong, right? Mm, that's just right. a maniac. Yeah. Just a maniac running about, right. running amok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting some people who deserve it and some people who, quite frankly, don't. You've probably seen the 2005 version. You might have we seen We did a version. video on it. We, you might have seen the 70s version. Mm -hmm. I Maybe it was on TV when I was a kid. Probably. You may not have seen the 1933 version, King Kong or Men Who Hate Women For No Reason, the movie. <laughs> It's just yeah. a bunch of men on a ship being like, this, what are you doing here? She's like, I'm here for the for the King Kong movie. No, I don't like that. <laughs> there's a moment. There's so, a great line. I know exactly where you're going with this. Do you want to do it no, now? Please, but, well, there's a moment where, so it's Fay Ray. Yeah. Breakout role as uh, as this uh, a, a young woman who's come to the big city but she, and, and she wants to she wants, she, wants, she wants to make it somehow and she gets roped into this suicide mission to go to an yep. island. Uh, and, and be accosted by a giant ape and everybody else. Yes. But she spends some time on the ship with a, with a bunch of people who don't like her. Yeah, they're like well, one guy in particular. The love interest, yes. Jack, who's like, what's women doing here? I hate women. Why, why you ruin everything? Why don't you kill yourself? And then 30 minutes into the movie, after a small number of conversations, he says to her, they're alone and they're on the, the deck of the ship, and he says... I guess I love you. Yeah. And she says, but Jack, you hate women. <laughs> and and he, he does. He goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> he literally says, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. It was a simple, it was, James, this was a simpler time. You could meet a woman for 30 minutes. Be awful. Then, be awful and then marry her. Because she had to because she couldn't get a credit card or a home exactly. if, she, if she didn't marry I think you. of this era as the uh, all right boys era. Because <laughs> it was all, you know, because it was, it was a simpler time. It was a beautiful time. You'd have 10 to 20 of your boys behind you and you could go like, all right, boys, let's build a raft. <laughs> all right, boys, back to the ship. All right, boys, see these prehistoric wonders from before the dawn of man? Let's shoot them. You know? <laughs> yeah, your boys are back here no matter what. They just, they just murmur. Yeah. You know, you'd say, all right, boys, and they go... you got to make sure that you're the head of the boys, though. Oh, absolutely. You don't yeah. want to be one of those murmuring fellows. You'll get tipped right off a tree to your death. You'll but be one of several men who die that way. And you're like, were they in an earlier scene, or is this new for the... I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, boys, take some photos of this, this ape. I didn't get trampled by the ape. <laughs> All right, boys. <laughs> this is a pretty remarkable movie. Yeah. Imagine seeing this, though, in 1933. Yeah. I mean, now, yuck, old, obviously. Yeah, yuck. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, full respect for using the Zack Snyder Justice League aspect ratio. <sighs> Got to respect that. Absolutely. Zack Snyder's the blueprint, as we know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They recut the original King Kong that's right. to fit his vision. No, look, I am joking in terms of it being yuck. This genuinely blew me away. Right. Like, I'd never, I'd seen clips of it. I hadn't seen it in its mm. entirety. It's very good world building. Look, the acting's not great. It's no. the 1930s acting. It's the 1930s It is what acting. it is. It's the 1930s staging. Like, it all yeah. looks like it's a play. It's all It's all middle shots of two men going, oh, I'll, I'll say a line and smoke a pipe or whatever. Exactly, no? yeah. But, but uh, yeah, the acting's a little wooden. So the original, uh, the inception of this story, like the movie Inception, mm -hmm. Marin C. Cooper, one of the co-directors, his first vision was of a giant ape on top of the world's tallest building fighting aeroplanes. And then he went, okay, how do I make this work? Right. And, and went backwards from there. Okay, yeah. Which I, I mean, love. I could just film that. <laughs> it's in an era where I could just film that and put it on screen and That's people would be blown away. But I'm going to go the extra mile. Mm. I'm going to use logic and reason. 
You know? Boy, there's a lot of logic and reason in this, I tell you what. Also, there's a lot of things in here that you'll recognise as staples of the film industry and things that still carry over. Screaming. Screaming. If you love screaming, this is a film for you. <laughs> At least 40 minutes of solid screaming. <laughs> Absolutely. 40 minutes of King Kong as well, which is a lot of King Kong. Mm, yeah. Really, yeah. Mm. It's one of the first Hollywood films to use a fully symphonic musical score by Max Steiner. Not just by him, but just in general. Sure, okay. Like, a lot of movies didn't really do that. They certainly hadn't well, had a score by Max Steiner. No. None of them had at this I, point. I think he maybe had done a previous movie to this. It, it's not One important. More. Sure. It's not important. Okay. I think Max Steiner would probably think it's important. That's true. I mean, the, not now. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone in this movie involved in it is dead, is long dead. Even King Kong? He died in the movie. They killed him in the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't do that these days. No. He'd give a thumbs up. Like, <laughs> his corpse would give a thumbs up on the ground. He'd be like, aha, that's a little clue. He'll be back for the sequel. Aha. You know, maybe some rocks would levitate off his coffin. And you'd know he's still, there's still a chance he could come back. Snyder is the blueprint. Absolutely, yeah. The animators for this, they also acted out the fighting between, like, the T-Rex and King Kong for, for reference footage. Uh-huh. Which makes total sense. You can see that in in the wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the uh-huh. wrestling in this, uh, it's also combining stop motion, which was relatively new, with rear projection. This is the stuff that really blows me away. This is the volume, baby. It is the volume, baby. And, and if you watch it like an Ahsoka or a, or a later seasons of The Mandalorian or whatever, it's the, it, it is set it's up the same like framing. a framing. It's the same framing. It's just two people in a mid shot gone. Oh, we're going to go to a different room. <laughs> we should stand sort of next to each other in a different room after this. Yeah, that's cool. Also, the thing with that stop motion and rear projection, they do it two different ways. So it might be that the stop motion is the rear projection, the background and actors are in front of it, mm. you know, like reacting to King Kong or dinosaurs or like the, the log tipping, mm. and they match it all up perfectly. Or they flip it where they have a stop motion set and they might have like an actor like in the corner and they'd film that prior and they flick one frame at a time for every movement of King Kong or whatever. Mm, yeah. So you're capturing that in footage, if that makes sense. It doesn't, but I'll watch this again <laughs> later on, then I'll understand maybe. There's a moment that really impressed me where King Kong's fighting a lizard in the cave mm-hmm. and Anne is in the background behind him. Yes. And then in front of King Kong is Jack hiding behind some rocks, which people are often doing in this movie. Like sure. hiding behind a thing <laughs> while a thing is happening. And he's like, there's no way I can die because I'm not one of the boys in the back. <laughs> that's right. I'm safe here. But that is, that's three separate elements that yeah. they've combined practically. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just really impressive that they were able to pull that off in a relatively convincing way. Anyway, standout moments. You mentioned where they kill that Stegosaurus. That's like a extended sequence where you see it just lumbering about yes. and it runs up and they shoot at it no, and no, gas no, it. They don't. They say, all right, boys, let's shoot this. <laughs> let's shoot this unique specimen that exists nowhere else in the world. Let's riddle this thing. <laughs> and then they shoot it a bunch and it falls over and then they walk past and they're like, better shoot it in the head. <laughs> yep. The stop motion that's happening, it's lined up perfectly, and it's one extended sequence. Yeah. It's a wanna, Mason. It is a wanna. You familiar with a wanna? No, but I'll research it later, <laughs> and then I'll, right, I'll yeah. understand it. Just watch the opening of Goodfellas, Mason. That's a famous wanna. This is the spiritual predecessor to the, the movie Extraction. <laughs> sure. You know? That makes sense. You know where Chris Hemsworth shoots that Stegosaurus <laughs> in that Russian prison? I, don't know. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, all the dinosaur stuff is really fun. Even the stuff that King Kong is not in. The the moment we mentioned it where King Kong is just killing several guys on a log. Yeah. And you see every body hit the ground individually. That's right. They yeah. don't have to show that. Yeah. And yet they do. I what I you know what I would say if I were to be critical of this movie, it's old yuck. But also <laughs> the the sound design, like they're not quite there yet. Like he's often thumping his yes. chest, you don't know. There's hear no it. footsteps. There's no footsteps. Foliage yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is this is very early days of sound yeah. in cinema when as well. When the bodies hit the ground and crumple, they don't really make a noise. <laughs> they don't go, ah I'm dead and I'm dying. But I guess what they probably were expecting is people in the audience of, of, of cinemas going, just yelling out, that's obscene. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't be hearing the sound effects. I don't anyway. like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the T-Rex fight, obviously. Mm. And the, the bit with where he does the yappy jaw, yeah. just little moments like that. Uh-huh, it's like, yeah, you don't yeah. need to put that in, but it gives him kind of an animalistic curiosity. Sure. Which yeah, okay. makes him feel more alive. Mm. And just, yeah. Okay. Bringing King Kong to life. Absolute marvel. So Marcel Delgado he made the animation models and they used metal 
skeletal structures. Uh-huh. Previously, they'd used so wood. It's like a Terminator. It's like a Terminator, that's right. And then they'd use like... I for knew the... we'd give a thumbs up. <laughs> would, yeah. And they, <laughs> they used material that would like flex and expand and contract mm. for the muscles. So you see him kind of move beneath. He's covered in rabbit fur, which they would try to brush down between each movement. But you watch it kind of move up and down on him because as they move the model, the fur moves and sure, it kind of yeah. gives away that it is mm. stop motion. And then they also built like a bunch of life-size stuff. There's the there's the bust, like the head and the shoulders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a big hand and a big arm <laughs> and a big, big foot for stomping. Is the scale correct? Like when he goes into to, to Faye Ray's it, it like hotel room and like drags the bed out, it's like, <laughs> is that scale right? I don't know if it's, I don't know, what did you just put rabbit fur on a broom? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, well, even the models of Kong are different. The one in the jungle is smaller than the one in the city. Sure. And it's, 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 well, because they gave him roids on the trip over. They must have, to, yeah. Because at some point during the, the the boat ride, somebody's like, I don't know, I've been around this guy for a while. He's not that impressive anymore. <laughs> if I'm yeah. honest. Well, let's roid him up. Let's see how big we can get him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's on GGH. What's Gorilla that? Growth Home. <laughs> And one They're thing, all on it, all the stars. They all the gorillas. Oh, just oh, just diet and exercise. Is that right, oh, Mighty Joe Young? Oh, poached chicken and brown rice. <laughs> Shut up. You're on GGH. We all know. And bananas, is it? <laughs> yeah. And one thing I like about this version of King Kong, and it's similar to that of Godzilla, though there is more humanity in him, is that, God, he sucks. Sure. Like, just, he goes on multiple tears, and sometimes it is justified and sometimes he just pulls a woman out of her bed and goes oh this isn't the woman that i know and just drops her to her death imagine that's the way you go out yeah what a nightmare you didn't even go to the show (laughs) no you don't know you don't know what's happening you're probably sleeping because you did a big day shift yeah yeah yeah. you're probably like 20 bucks for a ticket this is insane i'm not going to that (laughs) yeah i'll just have a nice rest before my work at the Pollution factory or whatever. <laughs> the lead eating factory. Yeah, the lead eating factory. And then you're dragged out of there. Yeah, my God. There's a point where he just he puts a guy in his mouth and he chomps him a couple of times. He's like, nah, and he just spits him. Yeah. Just spits him out. A number of these scenes also that were deleted for like various re-releases because people found them distressing or the censorship boards were like, we can't put this in. It's a very violent movie. It is. Yeah, especially of the era. Yeah, well, I've seen worse. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Remember those weird sucky creatures in the remake? Oh, man, I want to talk about that. Giving everybody a big suck. <laughs> they, were, I mean? they were, weren't they? Yeah. You know? <laughs> People remember. People remember, yeah. Yeah, the city rampage. I found this fascinating that the Empire State Building had only been completed two years prior. Huh. And I'm trying to think of like a, an equivalent thing that happened like two years ago. And I guess it would be like, I don't know, if King Kong <laughs> destroyed Twitter I don't know, when sure. it was bought out two years oh, ago. Oh, what if King Kong climbed that big sphere in Vegas? Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's what you want. That's right. Yeah, I love it. It's a real struggle. <laughs> he's just slipping he's off. He's slippery, <laughs> so slippery. You know what? And it's got a, it's got the big face and it's looking yeah, at him, the big got, face. It's got a big SpongeBob on it. And he gets <laughs> mad because he uh, hates SpongeBob. The, all the, 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 the guys in the boat kept showing him SpongeBob on the way over. And he's like, <laughs> God, I'm getting bigger and I hate SpongeBob. Yeah. Do you reckon the natives of the island were happy that Kong was taken? They were like, man, that guy sucks. I hope something really terrible happens to him. I think probably all the women that were going to be sacrificed are happy, yeah. Sure. But also... maybe the natives would just sacrifice him to whatever now. Yeah, just whatever comes through the door. Let's sacrifice him to that dead T-Rex, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. But also, do you think, like, they would miss him? They're like, yeah, he was kind of like our TV, though, wasn't he? You know, he'd show up. It was pretty exciting. Push some trees over, do a big scream. It's good. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. <laughs> really breaks up, you know, our normal day of lighting a bunch of torches and running around. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about all of that. But uh, I actually found the ending when he died, like, it's a little bit affecting still. Because he's just, he's confused. Like, he's slowing down as he's being riddled with bullets. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's wondering where the blood is coming from. His insides. <laughs> sure. He doesn't know that, though, does he? I guess. And I do think it's really funny how he bounces off the building on the way down a couple of times. Like, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy that. But I think, yeah, it, it's funny how they managed to bring it around to, like, you know, there's no sympathy for Godzilla. It's like good. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, the the original one I'm talking about, yeah. but this it's like, oh no, he's just you know he's just a bloke having a go, wasn't he? It's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I do love that line where it was it's the crocodile Dundee of his time. <laughs> he got sent to an he got, un- <laughs> he got he got sent to a to to a world that was not his own. Yep. And he just lashed out. You know. He did. Yeah. 
I did love that line that it's like it wasn't the airplanes that killed him. It was beauty that killed the beast, which is basically like women. Am I right? Can yeah. you believe women did this? Uh, beauty's the brand of the machine guns. Oh, the okay. Well, that's So technically fine. he's not wrong. Yeah, yeah. God, now in terms of reactions to this, people, like the general audience loved it. It was the... It's a blockbuster. It's the equivalent of a 1933 blockbuster. Our co-director, Maren Cooper, who reacted to a critic's idea that the movie was implausible by saying, sure it is. I can't think of anything more implausible. Imagine seeing this and going, this isn't very real. <laughs> yep. Yeah, man. <laughs> What's that guy? What's that science guy? Is that guy? Neil deGrasse Tyson. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the guy. It's exactly... <laughs> oh. actually, actually, the gorilla would be crushed under its own weight, I think, actually. <laughs> Well, he's on the GGH. So yeah, that's don't worry right. About yeah, it. you don't know. Uh, so, of course, there are dated depictions in this mm. of you know the way they treated women or the one woman. Oh no, there's two women because another one gets flung out of that building. Yeah, I guess. And the natives, obviously. And it, you know, obviously, it is of the era. It's a it's a very different time. But here's something that's interesting. Uh, the film was initially banned in Nazi Germany with the censors describing it as an attack against the nerves of the German people. And Weak. <laughs> I know, right? And potentially German racial sentiment. However, according to uh, an in- a confidant of Adolf Hitler, Hitler himself was fascinated by this film and saw it several times. He was a big film buff. So if you like this movie, you like the same thing as Hitler. Wow. Yeah, so just bear that in mind. Sure. Do you like this movie? Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know that Hitler thing. <laughs> Well, Hitler breathed oxygen. We're all breathing oxygen. Oh, Sometimes you like that, a, do you? No, I don't like anything <laughs> that about that guy. Wow. I don't like him. Hmm. I mean, I like how he's addicted to meth. I think that's pretty funny. That is funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it's time for trivia. 1933, King Kong. This is the trivia segment of the show, Mason. Oh, this is going to be obscene. I don't think so. On uh, August 10th, 2004, two days after Fay Ray died, the Empire State Building darkened its lights in memory of her. It's nice because she, she was up it in this... This movie. That's that's a nice tribute. And again, if the Las Vegas Sphere was around when she passed, they would have put a, a one of her eyes real big on it. And I think that'd be beautiful. Just looking around at Vegas, you know. Yep. Now you might have heard about this, but there's a deleted scene which has never been found, which was apparently only publicly shown once for a preview screening. And it's a scene where Kong shakes the sailors off the bridge and they fall into the ravine and then they're eaten by giant spiders. Now apparently at this alleged preview screening that may or may not have happened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Audience members screamed and left the theatre or they talked about this grisly sequence throughout the subsequent scenes. And so one of the directors said, it just stopped the picture cold. So the next day back at the studio, I took it out myself. And this has completely disappeared. There is like, there's rumours of its existence and there are still images that do. But it was remade, of course, in the 2005 King That's Kong right. movie. And Peter Jackson also went back <laughs> and made that scene in the style of 1933, oh, yeah, right. so uh-huh. which is which is fun. He did the whole black and white thing and rear projection and and all yeah. of that, which is a fun little thing he did. And look, it's 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 fun to think that people were too scared of, of the the spider sequence, but I think the second theory is more fun. The idea that they wouldn't stop talking about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's climbed the building, but it's not as good as the spider thing. Oh, he's he's got to, he's got to, he's climbed. Oh, it's not as good as the spider thing. <laughs> Everybody's taking photos of King Kong, but it's not as good as the spider thing. Never somebody should have taken photos of the spider thing. I wish I did. Wish I took photos of it. But your cameras, they take forever. You know how they are in 1933. Or as we call it, the present day. (laughs) Anyway, let's burn down this (laughs) theatre. Something to do. Something to do. (laughs) It is something to do. Uh, So you mentioned this, but there's a moment where somebody says, these tickets cost me 20 bucks. Now, assuming that they're $10 each, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. He's buying two tickets. One for him and one for a woman he's trapped into his life. Mm. $10 in 1933 is equivalent to $234 in 2024. Is that a reasonable amount of money to Mm. go to a theatre and you heard there might be a gorilla there Mm -hmm. and then they pull up the curtain, there's just a giant gorilla chained up. Is that a reasonable amount of money to pay? That's a, I mean, that's a, that's a chance you are taking, isn't it? That's (laughs) wild. Yeah. Like imagine, I don't don't know how much, uh, Taylor Swift is often touring and I don't know how much those tickets cost, but maybe... Sort of equivalent. Yeah. What if What if you were like, hey, listen, uh, you can pay $230 and Taylor Swift might play a, a series of hits from her, her, her vast catalogue of albums mm. or there's just a giant gorilla chain. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it gets loose. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably worth it, honestly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's 50-50. It really is. God. Before they set it both up, Taylor Swift <laughs> go, goes on stage and they set the gorilla up 
and then they flip a coin. <laughs> and if it's tails, Taylor Swift is just like, well, bye. Or she drops through the stage, <laughs> just the trap door opens. <laughs> uh, you know how Roger Ebert, he didn't like the original Godzilla? He mm-hmm. did like this one. He's like, it's corny and cheesy and sure. whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's American made. Yeah, he, loved America it. Made. He, he likes it. But he kind of, I read his review and there's a reluctance to it. To, to, to like, I know it's hokey and silly and the special effects don't hold mm. up, but I like it, I guess. You know, you can openly like it. It's okay. Hitler liked it, but yeah. whatever. That's right. Whatever. Uh, this is also one of 11 films that Fay Ray appeared in, released in 1933. Damn. I feel like that was, this was an easier time, right? There's no method acting. There's no weight loss or muscle gain. Sure. You turn up. There and would have been some meth acting. <laughs> oh, definitely. Sort of later on, I yeah. think. Yeah. Once we hit the Judy Garland era, there would definitely be some oh, meth yeah. acting. It really would have just been like, you turn up, they switch on the camera, you go, what's that? Who's there? They switch it off, you have a cigarette, you know, yeah. your movie's done. Sure, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm. But, I mean, you were also kind of, you know, you, you, were, you were in contract to that yeah. movie studio for your entire life. That is true. And you got $10 a week. Yep. Which was enough to see a giant gorilla, I guess. So that's, <laughs> that's something. That's right. In terms of box office... The budget of this was $672,000, which is the equivalent to about $16 million nowadays. And the box office return initially was $5.3 million, which today is about $126 million. So right. big return on this. Mm-hmm. This film grossed $90,000 in its opening weekend, the biggest opening ever at the time. And it actually saved RKO, who made this. The previous year, they lost $10 million. Wow. I mean, in movies. I don't think they just lost it. Sure, right. Yeah. Uh. Um, so MGM they actually offered to buy this movie before it was released for a million dollars, which RKO declined, luckily, because every time they re-released this, it made like multiple millions of dollars. Right. This was an absolute cash cow for them. It also got a sequel nine months later, the same year Son of Kong came out in December. Well, nine months later. Mm. That means Kong was doing it. He was doing it. In we don't know the gestational movie. cycle of a giant gorilla. It's probably nine months. Yeah, it's probably nine months. Isn't that what that Hugh Grant movie's about? Yeah. The gestational period of a giant gorilla? That's right, where he impregnates Julianne Moore with a giant gorilla. Yeah. And Robin Williams comes in, he's like, I'm a doctor. Ooh, very good. Ooh, <laughs> lovely. Ooh. A gorilla, you say. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, so the King Kong movies, just the movies themselves, mm-hmm, we're not sure. talking about the animated show, merchandise, all of that. At time of recording, they've made $1.7 billion. Are we including the MonsterVerse movies? Yes. Is this enough for Oh, maybe. I don't know. It's probably, probably. It could be. Yeah. It could be more or less. No, that's, in, that's probably right. We said a big number. What more do you Yeah, what want? more do you want? God. These people, they're always like, yeah. your numbers aren't accurate. You don't know what you're talking about. Kill yourself. No, I won't. I'm going to live. That's right. I'm going to live and say random numbers. <laughs> Four, 72, 100 billion trillion. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You Those know, numbers were all wrong, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, they, they, were were wrong. they were wrong for the context. We also don't even know, like, in terms of how wrong. Mm, yeah. Because we don't understand the original context. That's right. Yeah. But you know what? You know what's good context? Or should I say content? Go on. Things over at bigsandwich.co, where oh, the early... True videos go up there and by that I mean these get done and they, and they, and they go up early here's a hint towards next week by the way we're doing Mad Max we're doing the Mad Max movies I love that. Mason I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. so you can see that they're early but there's also bonus movie commentaries there's video game let's plays we play so many good and bad video games there you play them yeah I, I, I got fumble fingers so mm-hmm. you know I mostly just commentate from the back yeah do, do it better do a backflip play, play a better game yeah <laughs> <laughs> Too late, I guess. <laughs> There's other bonus podcasts. Also our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out there early on Sunday as opposed to Monday. But if you want to check that out, we're going to talk about the new Godzilla X Kong movie. That's right. Uh, that's got its own YouTube channel, Spotify. It's on Apple and whatever. Just Google it all. Just use whatever thing you use, all right? <laughs> Just use whatever I don't know what you use. I don't know what you're up to. Right? Yeah. Mm. What are you, what are you, listening to podcasts on Roku or something? Is that what you're doing? Maybe you do it. They can probably do that. You shouldn't do that. That functionality is probably there, though. But don't do it. Don't do it. All right. Thanks, everyone. And thank you to Ben and Lawrence for the edit. Thank you, Ben and Lawrence. Oh, also, before we go. Yeah. Yogo commercials. Oh, my God. We didn't even mention yogo commercials. I love those. Yeah. What, why are you bring them up, though? Because they're stop-motion gorilla they're stop stuff? Because they're stop-motion gorilla stuff. Yeah, man. Look those up. Yeah. Australian as well, by the way. That's Australian right. Australian owned and loved. Yeah. Is yogo any good? I can't imagine it is. I don't remember liking as a kid. I remember eating and being like, I like the idea of this, but this tastes like shit. Mm. Good ads, though. Great ads. That's just why I'm just why It's I'm... speed. They did speed, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, Among others. That's right. Yeah, man. We'll grab that, Jamie, guys. We'll see you next week. Get yourself a yogo.